behind us are the contenders for our best family vehicle of the year. And this is sort of a unique category because it's the only one where we have four different finalists. Yeah, for the amount of really good family vehicles, crossovers and SUVs that we drove this year, it was kind of hard to narrow it down to these four, but I think we've got a good group. It was definitely our hardest category to pick a winner, you could say that, right? Absolutely, but we spent a lot of time in these vehicles and we rate them all on a scale of one to 10 and all of these scored over 9.0 points on our scale. So this is the best combination of interior space, comfort, on-road dynamics, all of that things that make it a perfect vehicle for a family. Yeah, absolutely. We spent time in the back seat, we spent time in the driver's seat, we played with all the tech, and I think this is it. These are the four that we really wanna decide which one is best. So let's go check them out one by one. Let's do it. This is the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is the first time that the Jeep Grand Cherokee gets a third row, which is a pretty big deal. That's why we get L, right? Yeah, the L is for new, and it's actually the most spacious third row in the entire segment. Jeep sells a lot of cars, people love their Jeeps. I think they've been waiting a long time for a new Grand Cherokee and they've done a lot to make this a new car. Beyond the third row, you also get a super comfortable first row and a super comfortable second row. You can choose between captain's chairs or a traditional bench and leather is everywhere. I like that they've kind of nailed the little things too. Like we were going between the rows, there's charge ports in all three rows. They have uh, air conditioning vents in all three rows too. It seems like it's a car that's perfect for taking your family on long hauls as well. And you also get the new Uconnect 5 infotainment system, which carries over from Chrysler and Dodge. And it's really one of our favorite new infotainment systems. I can't even tell you how many different cars we've driven with Uconnect and we love it every single time. They've just done some small things to make this better in this car. And then you also get tons of safety too. This has the active driving assist, which means it's super comfortable on the highway. Plus you get the new corporate platform and a new suspension, which means it has a great ride. And let's move on. Next up is a car that you and I have spent a lot of time in particularly. This is the smaller sibling to the universally loved Kia Telluride. This is the Kia Sorento. Yeah, even though it is the smaller sibling, you do get a standard third row in this one. And it is just as good as the Telluride in a lot of ways. You can get your Sorento in so many different ways. You can get a hybrid, you can get multiple gas engines. This one is the X-Line, which makes it just a bit different. Yeah, the X-Line, a lot of companies are doing the rugged thing, and this is true for this one. You get the X-Line, it has a little bit of a lift. You get this cool Aruba green paint job. You get a rust-colored interior. It's just a really cool looking crossover. Yeah, they've done a couple of things to make it just look that much different from the rest of the Sorento lineup. And that also means a really nicely rounded out interior. Yeah, the interior is very nice with that rust color and leather, stitched leather, quilted leather. It's just, you get a lot of options inside. Talk to us about the, the safety suite specifically, because that is one of the biggest high points of this vehicle. Yeah, Kia traditionally has one of the best active safety suites on the market today with the highway driving assist. And that's true of the Sorento. You can just tick the button on the steering wheel and it's not totally hands off, but it's as close as you can get pretty much. Yeah, it's a great cruiser. And speaking of that leads me to my final point. This has the bigger of the two gas engines, the upgraded engine. I call it out specifically because our entire staff loves it. Yeah, the turbocharged 2.5 liter has the most torque in the entire class and you get more torque than a Kia Telluride. You also get a dual clutch transmission, which is super rare on a family vehicle. Yeah, no CVT here, anything like that as a nicely packaged powertrain. Absolutely. Let's go check out the two Nissans. So this is one of two Nissan vehicles that we brought to Best Family Vehicle. Why do we have two Nissans, Jeff? Uh, honestly, because Nissan has just been killing it lately they with have. their crossovers and SUVs. And the Rogue is one of their best selling cars. And it's pretty clear to see that this one is totally new. So we should point out specifically, this is the only two row crossover here. Family vehicles, a lot of people do require that third row, but the Rogue is still fantastic. Yeah, for a smaller family, the Rogue is probably one of the best options. You get a good interior, you get tons of trunk space, and it's super efficient. And talk about affordability. This is the most affordable car of the four. In terms of that interior and what you get, you're not losing much, even though this is several thousand dollars cheaper. Yeah, it's a nice leather interior. You get a nice second row, and there's a lot of technology inside. ProPilot is a huge thing. You and I have driven a ton of different Nissans. It's really nice to just use the ProPilot. It's a single button on the steering wheel and a ton of safety tech comes with it. Yeah, it's one of the better active safety systems in the class. Uh, you just push the button and it does a lot of the driving for you. And the ride is just super nice. This is a very, very comfortable vehicle. And then last but not least, we have the bigger of the two Nissan family vehicles. This is the all new Pathfinder. Tell us what's different between the Pathfinder and the Rogue. Well, obviously this is Nissan's bigger three row and it has a little bit of more rugged styling. It even has the new Nissan badge up front. 
Uh, they really went rugged, sort of back to their roots with this Pathfinder. Is it fair to say that they brought back cues from older Pathfinders into this design? You might fight me on that a little bit. A little bit, but I think in general this class is just moving to a boxier, more rugged design. We saw it on the Jeep, we've seen it on a lot of others, and I think the Pathfinder does it really well. The other thing, no CVT anymore. This gets a legitimate nine-speed gearbox. Finally, they got rid of the CVT and they replaced it with a genuine automatic gearbox, and it really does make a difference when you're driving it. Definitely. This one we have here is the highest trim level you can get on the Pathfinders. That means the interior is pretty loaded. You might not expect so much, especially in a Nissan vehicle, but they've absolutely hit a home run with this interior. The interior is really nice. It's got a quilted leather. It's got tons of technology. The third row is spacious. It's usable for adults. I think they really nailed it with the interior of this one. You can actually slide the second row backwards and forwards to accommodate more room in the third row. Yeah, it's a little one push that just slides the second row up and it's super easy to get into the third row. So that rounds out our finalists for best family vehicle. Now let's pick a winner. Yeah, let's do it. So this is it. This is our best family vehicle of the year, the Kia Sorento. I think uh, last year our favorite family vehicle was the Telluride, right? That's fair yep. to say? Uh -huh. And a lot of that car's DNA translates over to the Sorento like nothing was missed. Yeah, I know it's a little cliche, but this really does feel a lot like a shrunken Telluride. It gets the third row, it gets the aggressive styling, and in fact I actually think this looks better than a Telluride, and it's just really great to drive. There might be some that still count Kia out when it comes to building a complete car and one that punches above its weight. The Sorento does all of that. Yeah, don't be dissuaded by the Kia badge. The Kia Sorento is the real deal.